Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at Paradox Engine Combo updated with the Lord of the Rings, which introduces quite a few cards to the archetype, starting of course with the One Ring, a 4 mana a legendary artifact that's indestructible. When it enters the battlefield, if we cast it, we gain protection from everything until our next turn, so that means we can be targeted by hand disruption spells or burn spells, and we also can't be damaged by opposing creatures, so it usually keeps us alive for an extra turn. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, we lose one life for each burden counter on the One Ring. How do we get burden counters? Well, we can tap it, put a burden counter on it, and then draw a card for each burden counter on the One Ring. So we start out by playing it, it will protect us for a turn, can immediately tap it to draw a card, then on our next turn we'll lose one life, we can once again tap the One Ring now drawing two cards, and that will scale quite nicely over the course of the game. And then at some point if we have too many burden counters on the One Ring, we can simply play a second copy, and then we can keep the second one and sacrifice the first one to the legendary rule and then that way we can essentially reset it to keep drawing cards without losing too much life and then another great combo with the One Ring is the one of Emery, Lurker of the Lock, getting it back from the graveyard over and over again. So if we have two copies of the One Ring in circulation, Emery can get one back from the graveyard, and that way we can keep enabling the ability that protects us on our next turn, and that can beat a lot of creature strategies that aren't able to combo kill us some other way. So that's very effective for as long as we have an Emery in play. And then of course the One Ring also combos quite nicely with Paradox Engine, the namesake card of our deck, 5 mana Legendary Art artifact says whenever we cast any spell, untap all non-land permanents we control. So Paradox Engine is great alongside some mana creatures and mana artifacts. We've got all these one mana elves, now halflings as well at one mana. There's a Mox Amber, at two mana we've got a Mindstone, and then the Lapidary, the only alchemy card in the deck, can generate Mox Opal, which is a real magic card with Metalcraft adding one mana of any color as long as we have three or more artifacts in play. So all these artifacts and creatures can be untapped repeatedly with Paradox Engine, as long as we can keep casting more spells. And then now with the One Ring also untapping alongside our other artifacts and creatures with Paradox Engine, we get to incrementally draw more and more cards each time, which makes it trivial to string together enough spells to eventually combo kill the opponent. And that will typically involve Karn the Great Creator, grabbing a copy of Aetherflux Reservoir out of the sideboard. Says whenever we cast a spell we gain one life for each spell we've cast this turn, so that will also incrementally increase over time. And then at some point we can pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to any target. So that's kind of the deck in a nutshell. Then taking a look at some of the specific card choices. At zero mana, of course, Mox Amber, great alongside Emery, as well as Kinnon, which are two of our legendary creatures. And then Kinnon will also make it so our artifacts and creatures generate an extra mana. Kinnon also works with Chromatic Sphere. If we sacrifice it, it makes two mana. And Chromatic Sphere is also great at both discounting Emery, as well as being able to get it back from the graveyard to keep drawing a few more cards. And it also is another cheap artifact to enable the Metalcraft a Mox Opal, so it fills a few different roles. Then we've got all our one mana creatures here with two copies of Lunar Elves and Elvish Mystic, just splitting them up since sometimes it can be bad to have multiples of the same copy in play or in your hand. And then the Delighted Halfling is a one mana 1-2 one that taps for a colorless, but it can also add one mana of any color that we can spend only to cast legendary spells, and then those spells will be uncounterable, so that can potentially even make our one ring, our Karn, and even Paradox Engine uncounterable, which are also all legendary, so that can certainly come in handy, and it can also potentially fix our mana to cast something like a Kinnon or an Emery if we're stuck on red and green mana. And then we've also got two copies of the Lapidary, as we mentioned, generating a legendary Mox Opal, another zero mana artifact. And both Mox Amber and Mox Opal can be very important as a free way to kind of kickstart our combo with Paradox Engine. If we manage to play Paradox Engine but are fully tapped out, then sometimes playing a zero mana Mox Amber or Mox Opal lets us untap all our other creatures and artifacts, and that way we can keep stringing together more spells and eventually kill the opponent on the spot. Then a Kinnon can also activate its 7 mana ability to potentially look for a non-human. So Kinnon can find our 1 mana creatures, but we're typically more interested in finding Emery to eventually set up some graveyard loops, or it can find our 1 of Myria, and that can also be very important if we manage to make infinite mana with Kinnon and Paradox Engine, but are missing a card draw engine, then we can just keep activating Kinnon over and over until we hit Myria, and then with Myria in play we can tap 2 untapped non-token artifacts we control to exile the top card of our library, and we may play it this turn. So now with infinite 
infinite mana and enough artifacts to tap, we can eventually find a one ring or a Karn to find our actual win condition. So having a one-off non-human creature to hit with kin on that can win the game can also be quite important. And then of course Emery, great at setting up all these infinite loops, not only with the one ring, but also if we have multiple copies of Mox Amber, since it is legendary, we can only keep one in play. We cast it, and then with Paradox Engine we get to untap Emery as well as all our other stuff, and that way we can keep looping those over and over, make infinite mana, and at some point maybe win the game with our Aether Flux Reservoir. And then a Karn can fetch up not only Reservoir, but also one of copy of Paradox Engine. Could also consider adding a copy of the One Ring to the sideboard. For now, I'm also including some answers to creatures and other problematic permanents with Sky Sovereign and then Cityscape Leveler. Sky Sovereign can also be crewed with Karn's plus one ability, so that can be pretty sweet. And then I'm also including a copy of Tormod Script as a zero mana artifact that we can fetch up with Karn and play right away to potentially stop graveyard combo decks, which can be pretty fast. So having an immediate answer can be important and then it's also zero mana artifact if we need to enable metal craft for mox opal can come in handy and then the ancestral statue is also quite important if we have the ether flux reservoir in play already and we have paradox engine and a few ways to generate mana then all we really need is to get an ancestral statue with karn play ancestral statue it can pick itself up and that way we can keep making more mana keep getting more life with reservoir and then statue by picking itself up can be recast over and over and that can also to win the game if we're missing let's say a one ring or an emery to draw a lot of cards and that pretty much sums it up our mana base also includes a few channel lands soaring city and boseju can also be important to interact with the opponent's permanence and then focusing mostly on the blue green dual lands so we can cast our one mana elves and halflings and then easily cast a kinon or an emery on turn two and then we've got a few extra red sources to cast a lapidary and eventually emiria as well and then we also get to play with Gigantha as our companion. And Gigantha is actually quite useful in this deck since we can often generate a ton of mana. And this is a decent mana sink. Can also tap for a bunch of mana to potentially combo with our Paradox engine. And it's also a legendary to help enable Mox Amber, which can also make the difference. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of our hand? Mindstone. We've got a Lapidary to make another Mox here. And with three artifacts, it would be enabled. So it seems all right. Don't need to show the Mox Amber just yet. Even though it could be taken away by a hand disruption spell. Opponent on the uh, Thopter deck with turn one Ornithopter plus Foundry. So that's already a 4-4. But we found a Kinon. That's a good one. So we can play Kinon. Play our Mox. And then... Still play Mindstone. Our opponent could be playing Portable Hole to remove Kinon. So that's the main concern. Sentinel could also be effective. And make that double Sentinel. Okay. Take four. And another Mindstone. So, if I play the Lapidary, make a Mox, can play Mindstone, paying for double Sentinel, play the Mox. Feels like next turn we can definitely combo off with Paradox Engine. So let's go with the Lapidary. Play another Mindstone. And then we'll pay the tax. And then playing the Mox now would kind of avoid having to pay the tax next turn. So that may be worth it, even though it's a free way of untapping everything with Paradox Engine out. And then I suppose we could play Karn as well here. And plusing doesn't really help, so let's minus. And then I could get a Reservoir already. Could get... Ancestral Statue to get infinite untaps with Paradox Engine, but then we still need a win condition. So I'll get the Reservoir and pass it back. Lapidary can chum block just fine. Ingenious Smith, can they find a portable hole with it? Because removing Kinon would take away a lot of extra mana. Finds a Volt Scourge, that's okay. Alright, so. Smith picks up a counter. 
And we can just jump to save Karn, and then we should get there with Statue next turn and Paradox Engine. Another Mox Amber to boot. No need to pay the tax. Make a bunch of mana. Play Reservoir. Minus to get Statue. You will not and then double tap Q to float all our mana. Play Statue. Rinse and repeat. Could also activate Kinon. We're making infinite mana here, so... Could put Gigant in hand and cast it, but there's no need. At some point we could also pick up Karn one more time to get another sideboard card. But just need to get above 50 life, and that'll do it. So yeah, we were lucky that our opponent didn't really have much disruption, despite having the turn 1-4-4. Four, four. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems quite promising. Turn 1, either Elves or Halfling, and then got more ramp with Mindstone, getting us to the one ring to hopefully string together the missing combo pieces. And yeah, let's go ahead and play Lanor Elves. If they take it out, the Halfling could be more useful later. Okay, we get to untap. So we'll play Mindstone plus Emery. Since we'll still have the 4 mana for Ring next turn. Emery mills over Chromatic Sphere and Mindstone. And a Wily Goblin harrights their opponent on the Goblin's deck. So the one ring could definitely buy us a valuable turn if our opponent cheats out a Muxus and gives her team haste. Could play the one ring already. Or we could just kind of develop our mana a little bit more and cycle a few chromatic spheres or get back a mindstone here, which I also don't mind. Play mindstone plus chromatic sphere. I'll just sacrifice that for green. Play Halfling, and there's Karn to get Paradox Engine, potentially. Could play another Emery, since I don't expect my opponent to remove any of my creatures, and then milling additional artifacts could come in handy. And there's Paradox Engine, Mox Amber, and the One Ring. So plenty of options now. So it feels like we need two turns to combo off here. Opponent with a Goblin Influx Array in the meantime. Giving Goblins a discount and conjuring a random Goblin. Okay. So I can go for Paradox Engine and then with Chromatic Sphere as the follow-up I can untap. So that seems awesome. Got four more mana, plus we can activate Emery once again. So yeah, I think we're going off now. Double tap Q, float all our mana. Play the one ring. So we can draw with it right away. Make more mana. Emery finds another artifact to replay. Make more mana. Draw more cards. Play more stuff for free. So yeah, no chance we fizzle out here. Play this Mox Amber. So the one ring is putting in work. 
At some point we can play Karn and then get our Reservoir. And that should do it. Already up to 27. Just gotta watch out that we don't deck ourselves. Can always replace the one ring with a new one. And then Amory can infinitely loop Mox Ambers as well at this point. So we don't have to cast any more spells other than Mox Amber. Okay. Yeah, the one ring definitely helped out here. And now we're at 60 life, so we can just fire off a reservoir for the win. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. We've got Mox Amber to go with Kinon and to discount Emery. Karn to eventually get our Paradox Engine, perhaps. And then if Emery mills another Mox Amber, we can go infinite. So could play the Mox Amber already. I think I do, in case your opponent has some hand disruption here. Seems important to have alongside both Kinon and Emery. Otherwise, I would maybe keep it a secret. Okay, the Spikefield Hazard points towards maybe a Charbelcher deck, although Gigantha typically not played in those decks. So maybe just some sort of Wizards aggro deck. And uh, yeah, we could go ahead, play Kinon, and then play Emery afterwards, and hope to mill more artifacts. Found a Paradox Engine. Okay, could already try and cast it next turn if our creatures survive. Discharge kills Kinon. Okay, so no Paradox Engine, since we're going to be a mana short. So instead, I could play Miria, or we could play Karn and get that going. What would we get with Karn here is a question. Didn't think we need to get Reservoir just yet, and we might get Paradox Engine from the Graveyard. So maybe I'm better off playing Miria at that point. And then take it from there. Soulscar Mage, so it is indeed a Wizard deck. And another Discharge kills Miria. Well, now we can put the Paradox Engine in play at least. I'll hang on to Soaring City. And then hope her opponent's not playing the new Flame of Anor to destroy artifacts. Opponent also had a Soaring City, but plays it out, so maybe their last land. Two more copies of Soulscar Mage and a Symmetry Sage. Do we see a Haste Sorcery here? Just a Wizard's Lightning killing Emery. Okay, at least we still have our Paradox Engine, but now no legendary creature to enable Mox Amber. Chromatic Sphere, okay. So what does Karn do here? Opponent is just top decking, so if they don't find non-creature spells, we're not taking a whole lot of damage, but that can quickly change, of course. So I can cycle Chromatic Sphere, I could play Karn, get the Reservoir, and then next turn we can play it and hope to keep going. Feels like I need to play the Sphere here to find something useful. Okay, found an elf, so can still play Karn, although if I play the elf now I can untap it next turn. So yeah, let's play the elf and put Gigantha in hand. And then at least Gigantha is another legendary to enable Mox Amber. And now with elf and Paradox Engine we can potentially make a bit more mana. So just take three, that's not too bad. And opponent also puts Gigantha in hand. Okay, so step one, probably play Gigantha after tapping Elf. Now we can tap Mox Amber and Elf, play Mindstone. Stone. 
play Karn. And then what do we get? Probably just Aetherflux Reservoir. And then next turn, hope to keep going. And then for now we'll pass. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, so they didn't find another non-creature spell to enable all their creatures. And next turn Reservoir is pretty likely to go infinite onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing green mana for L4 Halfling, but we can cycle the Chromatic Sphere and make green, so it's a bit awkward, admittedly. Mox Amber is also missing a Legendary, so this might still be a Mulligan. This is much better. And then a land can go. Turn 1 Halfling. I think I'm okay playing a Mox Amber as well. And without any disruption, kin on into Emery next turn. And a one ring would be excellent to get back next turn. So we're off to a nice start. Opponent in the meantime, a Mardu deck could be maybe a graveyard deck, as we see a faithless looting, so likely to be a reanimator. And Parhelion discarded means Grease Fang as opposed to the traditional creature reanimator. So yeah, they can already bring that back with Grease Fang next turn, which is concerning. Best we can do is put the one ring in play. And hope to draw something useful. Can put Giganta in hand. And hit for two. Mox Amber can give us another mana boost. Really just missing Paradox Engine now to combo off. Ooh, Temporal Lockdown gets rid of a bunch of our stuff. Luckily Emery at three mana can stick around. So start by drawing. Another one ring. And then Emery plus Mox Amber. Could play Gigantha here. Maybe that's alright. As opposed to playing another Emery, hoping to mill Paradox Engine, which then I won't have the mana to play anyways. Could also get back Mindstone, play another one ring, although I kind of like having one that draws three next turn. And then we can play another one. I had a 5-5 to the board. And then may as well hit for one. Do have a couple channel lands that can maybe deal with the lockdown. There's Grease Fang now. Our opponent hasn't missed a beat. So yeah, that means we're dead next turn unless we can play another one ring to prevent the damage. But at least with Emery we can keep looping the one ring, so that's not a concern. Just gonna make sure we don't die to our own ring. Okay, so let's see here. Emery back the ring. Mindstone into a one ring. And then I don't have to draw with it if I don't want to. Gigantha also stays back. So as long as Emery is around, we should be safe. And I can draw next turn with the one ring. And then uh, play another one so we never take damage from our own legendary artifact. Opponent does get to make more angels.
This is a very dramatic attack step. And a Crucius, that could maybe find another answer. Harvester certainly able to take out Emery. Alright, so we gotta find the Paradox Engine here. Could draw with the One Ring now, take one damage, and then next turn draw two just to dig a bit deeper. That seems worth it. So we fall to one. Draw two. Still no Paradox Engine. So Emery get back the one ring versus play another Emery, hope to mill a Paradox Engine. I think that's probably the more realistic out. No engine. So I could try again, or I could let Harvester kill Emery, and then replay another Emery to potentially keep going. Let's give this a shot. No Paradox Engine, just a couple of Chromatic Spheres. So I have a one ring in hand I can play, or I can just replay one from Graveyard to save another one, which will buy me another turn, basically. And that seems all right. So play a Lapidary, which makes a Mox. It is legendary, so can only have one. Could have also timed Giganta here, I suppose. Keep the fresh one ring. We're protected again. And we'll pass it back. Harvester kills Emery. That much is clear. So I'm not allowed to use a ring in the opponent's turn. So we've got a handful more draw steps to find a Karn or a Paradox Engine. And as long as we have a one ring in play, that should lead to victory. Since we have a lot of mana sources. But let's see if our opponent has more meaningful disruption. Grease Fang gets back Parhelion once again. That happens. They spared us the attack step animation by just sending in Parhelion, so I appreciate that. Blood Token discards another Parhelion, that's fine. Okay, what's next? Nothing, Crucius triggers. And discard to Saros Emissary. If that names artifacts, that would complicate matters a little bit, although we still have Soaring City, which we haven't milled to bounce it. So take our draw. Now I can activate the One Ring. And there's Paradox Engine, at long last. So, float a whole bunch of mana here. Play Lanor Elves. And then we should be able to keep the cards flowing with the One Ring. And there's Karn to find our Reservoir. Okay, so it took a second here, but kept the game suspenseful. Can't think of much that can go wrong here, but our opponent also have some mana untapped, so you never know. Play it safe. I guess one thing I could have done is maybe cast a whole bunch of spells in case our opponent has instant speed removal for our uh, reservoir. That way I could have immediately gained enough life to go up to 50, but that's going to be pretty difficult to set up. Okay, so can go ahead and play another Karn to get Statue. Opponent might have a Fatal Push to kill Statue. 
since they have the treasure tokens to enable revolt. But otherwise, that's probably the easiest way to finish things out. I'll keep some extra mana just in case. The one ring could draw more. But we'll probably call it a day here at uh, five counters. And our opponent has seen enough. Just replay a statue over and over, picking itself up, gaining infinite life with our reservoir, and eventually win the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is missing a red mana for Lapidary, but I'm liking the elves into the one ring early. And then we'll lead with Mystic. Opponent's got the cut down. Alright, let's just go for Mindstone. That way we can play the one ring, even if they have more spot removal. Mox Amber could come in handy. But yeah, let's just play the one ring and start drawing. This also protects us against more discard effects if the opponent is playing them. Can draw with the ring in their turn. Just in case. Okay, Liliana can make us discard. Says a dozen targets. One Mox Amber can go. Drop it. Now we can draw two. And then Chromatic Sphere can fix our mana for Lapidary, which will also protect our Halfling. Find a Kinon. Want to play that first. And then Mox Amber can make two blue mana and take it from there. Play Lapidary. Mox Opal's active. This makes green. And we can empty out our hand. Okay. And if Liliana minuses, we'll just sack the 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Shieldress Edict, goodbye halfling. Okay, let's keep on drawing. We're not under any pressure from the opponent's creatures, so might as well. So we're missing kind of another combo piece like Paradox Engine. Could activate Kinon, try and find an Emery. Could draw with Mindstone. Chromatic Sphere can draw. That's probably fine to just do now. Another Elf. So could put Gigant in hand and play it. Could play a couple Elves. Let's say we play Elf and Elf, then we should still have enough mana to activate Kinon. And there's Emery, perfect. Mills a Paradox Engine, times two even. So Giganthine Hands, play Mystic. And then we'll discard our land here, although we can just finish off Liliana instead. Alright, hope to dodge a board wipe, and yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Next turn, Emery gets back Paradox Engine, and with the one ring, we can pretty much draw our whole deck. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Double Lapidary could be a little awkward, since of course Mox Opal is legendary. Start with our Halfling. And then, we've got a couple artifacts already to enable Metalcraft. If Halfling survives, we can play Chromatic Sphere with it as well. And then next turn, maybe the One Ring. So we'll make some mana response. And then we'll still have two artifacts already here. So now unable to play the One Ring next turn, might just put a Gigantha in hand. 
Don't think I want to sack Chromatic Sphere because that would take us further from Melcraft. Static Discharge goes upstairs. Is your opponent on the more aggressive Wizard's deck, but no early creatures to apply pressure with? Found another engine, not really what we needed right now. So, yeah, we'll hit for one and then uh, put Giganth in hand. Could also leave Lapidary back to Chum Block in case your opponent gives their creature haste, which is also possible if they're holding the uh, one mana sorcery. So, let's try this. And then, next turn, if we fail to draw a land or another mana source, I may end up sacrificing Chromatic Sphere. Opponent passes, found a land. So now we can try to play the One Ring, and then next turn, Paradox Engine would be quite lovely. Lightning goes upstairs, down to 10, but now the ring protects us. Could already activate the ring. In case we draw another 1-drop, we can cast. Okay, Kinon could definitely come in handy next turn. Since it also makes extra mana with the Sphere and the Mox Opal. And since now we have the 1 ring, I'm okay attacking for 1, although I don't think it's going to make a difference. So we get to untap, lose one life, and then now probably start by playing Chromatic Sphere. That way if I play Kinon, I can immediately sacrifice it, even in response of removal. And then we should still have enough mana to play Paradox Engine, but let me double check. So Kinon's in play, Chromatic Sphere's in play, and then we have one mana, making one, two, three, four. Yeah, that should be enough. I guess we still need a way to kind of kickstart the Paradox Engine to start untapping everything. So I may need to just draw with one ring and hope to draw another land or zero mana card. Amory and Halfling. Okay, so let's play Chromatic Sphere. Now play Kinon. As soon as we have Kinon in play, we can tap this for two mana. Sack Chromatic Sphere. Sack Chromatic Sphere. Play Paradox Engine. And then we'll still have a land drop left. Play Emery. Still have three artifacts for Mox Opal, so that can keep making mana. And I think we're just gonna try and go for the win here. Play Mindstone, that's an extra mana source. And keep drawing with the One Ring. We've got Karn, so that can get Reservoir. And now a Mox Amber is good insurance as well. If our opponent had artifact removal, they probably would have taken out the engine by now. Uh -huh, play with Fire Kinon, fair enough. That does take away a couple uh, mana sources, but it should still have enough to where we're going to be alright. Could replay another Kinon here to make even more mana. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. We're making all the mana in the world. Eventually play Karn and that'll get the job done. Awesome. So yeah, the deck is proving to be pretty consistent at setting up the infinite combo with Paradox Engine, but at the same time it's also quite resilient. If our opponent has a couple removal spells or some hand disruption, it's not like our deck falls apart, unlike some other linear combo decks in the format. So that's definitely a nice quality of this new build, especially with the One Ring giving us another card draw engine and another way to potentially beat creature decks if we can keep looping it with Emery. We may not even need to infinitely combo to prompt a concession. So yeah, overall quite happy with how this deck ended up. Could definitely still be fine-tuned and potentially optimized over time, but this seems like a pretty good starting point. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.